Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark, I'm here with Steve. We're talking Final Cut Pro 10. Specifically, we're going into sub, subway. Submarine. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> sub rolls. Sub rolls, which sound okay. really good about this point. Yes. Sub rolls, what are they? Well, they're a means of exporting a file type, uh, much like what we call a, D a DM and E stem, dialogue, music, and effect. Dial separating dialogue from music for, from effects for different markets. Perhaps. Right, different markets. and. I'm glad you brought that up because people go, what, what, what are stems? Well, different markets require, let's say, um, foreign language overdubbing, or may maybe the sound editor wants just a certain cluster of effects, let's say explosions to do sound work on. You need a means of getting out that content from Final Cut because Final Cut's, well, it's not a track-based editor. It, right. So we're going to export what are called roles, and roles are simply clips that are tagged a certain way so that when you export them, Final Cut Pro will know what to do with them. So instead of tracks to separate, dialogue, music, and effects, you assign roles to those different In fact, audio types. That's right. In fact, the best way to, to demonstrate that is just look at this timeline. Here is a short film I, I did recently, and you can see a lot of audio clips in here. I don't, I don't know how they're tagged. I don't know what roles they're assigned to, but there, there's a quick way of finding that out. If I click this click, a clip appearance switch, you'll notice here there's a show pop-up. By default, it's clip names. I'm going to choose clip roles. Clip roles. Ah. Right. So okay. as soon as I do that, you'll notice that the clip names change. Like you'll see now, that's an effects clip. Yep. That's a music, music. clip. Uh, that's a dialogue clip. Okay. In other words, D, M, and E, dialogue, music, and effects. So you can do that to really kind of arrange your stuff visually into groups. So it's sort of naturally, you can see all the music together and dialogue and effects. And I know some of you out there are asking, well, does that happen automatically? Well, not necessarily. If you bring in effects, uh, sound effects from a, let's say, a sound effects library. It should be tagged that way, but sometimes you're going to want to go through your library and, and make sure things are Check. tagged properly before you put them in the timeline. So Final Cut does automatically assign a role to everything, but it might not necessarily be the exact right role. I can't that's always right. tell. You, yeah, and sometimes it gets it wrong is right, what I'm saying. So you do want to check it. Right, okay. and so that's what you should be, that's what any good editor should be doing anyway, is the yeah. end make sure all their, all their clips are properly tagged with right. the right role. Right. So in this case, we're assuming we are. now. Here's, here's where it gets interesting. I want to talk about sub roles. So we talked about roles as a category. Let's look at where you find them so you can see what the kind of the overall arching general picture of what gets exported by default. Okay. And then we'll get into sub roles. So if I press Command Shift 2, I'll open the timeline index. The timeline index. And notice I'm selected on the roles button. Yes. So you can see by default, without taking any further action, you have video roles, which in blue, video includes both video and titles. Mm -hmm. Which means you can actually export titles as a separate role if you wanted to. You can have a, a Spanish title, you can have an Different English, languages. a German. Yeah. It's fantastic. Um, and then you have your three audio roles, dialogue, music, and effects. Okay, and that's by default. The, by the default, roles that are, right. Okay. Now what I want to do is break this down even further. I don't want to export just effects because that would include everything. Perhaps I want to export just effects that are, let's say, trains or explosions or gun or gunshots or thunder or what have you. So some sub-collection of effects. That's right, some okay. sub-collection collection, you named it. So let's look how you do that. So I'm going to go to the modify menu and I'm going to go down here and choose a edit roles. And the edit roles window will come up and I'm going to choose effects. Mm -hmm. And this little button over here, notice the section here, sub role. Sub roles, We're perfect. going to add a sub role, just click plus. And under uh, the highlighted section, I'm going to type in train sound effects. And I'm going to click OK. Just like that, I have created another category. Now, now, it doesn't show up in the timeline well, index. Well, it, it will. not. It will after you assign them. Ah, because it hasn't been assigned anything. Right. Got so it. So okay. what I want to do is go down to this part of the timeline where, in fact, I'll zoom in. You can see right here, these three are my train sound effects. Right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select them and go up to the Modify menu and choose Assign Roles. Notice here, there is that sub role ah, right, under right underneath it. Right so it says yep. Train SFX. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. And immediately you'll the see name it, changes. the name changes right on the clip. Fantastic. Now, if we open the timeline index, uh -huh. Command Shift Two, we should see the sub role there. See, it's, yep. it's and it even category. gives another one for everything that's not train, right? But basically, every, everything, that's right. Everything that's not train will okay. show up. Well, that like export yeah. with those um, those train sound effects. Okay. Um, I want to be clear about something here. When you turn these off, and you export. This, this is only about playing back. This has nothing to do with exporting. All right, so let me repeat that. So if you turn off effects right here, the, all the effects, 
that means those effects will not play in the timeline. They're grayed out. Right. But if you export, they'll still be there. They'll still be there. Okay. That's, so that's really important. It's important to understand that all that is to help you target and identify which ones have been tagged and which ones haven't. Okay. That's what that's really for. I see. Okay, it's okay. kind of an analyzing it, but yes. it does not affect export. So then how do you affect export? Okay, that's a good question. Then we're going to do that. I'm going to turn that back on, and I'm going to close the timeline index and open up the share menu, and I'm just going to export a master file, because just typically what you're going to do with master is the highest quality audio or video from the timeline. So this is a scenario where you want to send just some specific piece of audio to a sound person who's doing your final mix. That's right. Or okay. maybe you want to send the, the, the high quality video to an After Effects artist or somebody that's okay. going to be doing something to the picture. But you would always want to choose Master, master file. file. So, and, and you'll see in a moment, this is the only selection that allows you to export sub roles. Okay. And, and items as roles. Okay. So I'm going to choose Master File and I'm going to go into Settings. And under format, I'm not interested in video and audio, only audio. Okay, because okay. in this case, you're exporting just those train sounds. Right. Now, notice it says down here, roles as. This is the mm -hmm. key. Mm -hmm. Go down here, it says audio as separate files. Don't worry about this train effects in a moment. I'll get back to that because okay. it's really cool. Audio only as separate files. You go ahead and choose that. And by default, it assumes you want D, M, and E stems. So it lists all the default audio roles. Right. Now, what I could do is, if I didn't want to export dialog music, I can click this minus button and take them out. So it'll it, disappear. Right. But notice it's going to export all effects. But if you click this pop up, I can say, only uh, choose to export out the train sound effects. So that's where you can choose the sub role and just have that sub role get That's exported. right. But if I export right now, I would get dialogue music and just the train sound effects, uh -huh. unless I wanted just the other effects, and that would without exclude the without the train. Okay. Exactly. Does that make sense? It makes so, perfect sense. So just pointing this out. Now, here's, here's what's really cool. I could say, well, if I know I'm going to be doing this a lot, choosing a sub role, I may say, all right, I'm going to, I don't really want, I just always want to have a, an option to export just the train sound effects. And nothing else. And uh -huh. Nothing else. What's really great is that you can save this as a preset. Ah, okay. So when nice, you save it nice. as a preset, and you, you can see that that's what I did earlier. Okay, that's why it was listed there. It lists all the presets you've created. And this is huge because every single time, do you really want to be setting this up every right. single time? Deleting the odd, the, deleting the video that you don't want, the titles that you don't want. Just use a preset and it's done it all for it's you. It's done. It's done all for you. So Very now nice. all you need to do, in fact. Just click, click your, your next, and uh, let's see here. Um, I'm gonna create a folder, exported, exported train, SFX, click create, click save, and it should happen fairly quickly, but when it's done, I will just get a track, a clip that's just those train sound effects. Will it be the whole project duration with the sound effects in the right place in that whole project? That's a very good question. I'm glad he asked it. Yes, it's going to be the entire project and where those sound effects would appear in time. Okay, so if your sound person has the other stems, they just need to drop this in and those sound effects will happen at the right point in time. Exactly. Okay, so he can use those as reference and then redesign. If you, you're having them do a much more sophisticated thing than you did with maybe some quick stock effects, right. they, they can sort of use that as reference. Yeah, and I, it, it works really well. So Steve, that was a great tip. Thank you very much. Excellent. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Please check us out at RippleTraining.com and come back and watch us again next week. Thanks for watching MacBreak Studio.